This video is for Theme Communication, Unit You Can Help. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a word processing application like Microsoft Word to create a step-by-step -step guide. You can see that on my screen I've got two windows open, um, and both of them are Microsoft Word, here and here. The reason I've got these open is because this word processing document here is where I'm going to create my step-by-step -step guide. And you can see that what I'm going to create that step-by-step -step guide on is how to insert a table in Microsoft Word. So I need Microsoft Word open here as well to actually carry out this task. So in here I'm actually going to insert a table and in here is where I'm going to create a step-by-step -step guide of how I did this. It's always a good idea if possible to have both your screens uh, accessible at one go. And what I mean by that is if you can have the document where you're creating the step-by-step -step guide open here and then the document that you're actually carrying out that activity on here for example it might be a step-by-step -step guide of how to create an animation in Microsoft PowerPoint so if you can have Microsoft PowerPoint open at the same time as you've got your word processing document open to create the step-by-step -step guide it's just going to make things a lot easier because you could do the activity in this window do the print screens and then copy them across and write about them uh, in your step-by-step -step guide here. As you can see, I've started off my step-by-step -step guide with a title. And that's always going to be very important. Um, for the person that's reading this, they'll want to know straight away, at the very top, when they start, what is this document going to show them. So I've put a nice, clear title. It's a help guide on how to insert a table in Microsoft Word. I'm just going to select that. I'm going to increase the font size so it stands out. I'm going to make it bold. And I'm going to underline it so the title is very clear. So I've got my title. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to press enter on my keyboard. That's going to create for me a line break. And then I'm going to use steps to give clear instructions here of how, of how to follow this document. So I'm going to write step one. And this is going to be a subheading. So I'm going to take off the underline. And I'm going to change the font size to slightly lower than that of the title, so to 16. Once I've got step one, I'm going to press enter again. I'm going to take off the bold, and I'm going to choose font size 14. And this is going to be the body of, of my document. What I mean by that is this is what's going to be uh, the look and size and style of the main writing within my instructional document. So this is some information. You can see here now I've got a very nice layout. Title big, bold, and underlined. Each step that I create in this document is going to be bold font size 16 and then each of the main text uh, with the instructions is going to be font size 14 and not bold. Uh, and then you're going to keep that and you try and keep that consistent throughout the document. When I create a step-by-step -step guide, the first thing I like to do is actually go in and take the print screens that I'll need for the step-by-step -step guide. The reason for that is then it will give me a good idea of what the instructional text will need to be in this guide. Now if I'm going to show someone how to insert a table in Microsoft Word, the first thing that I would do is I'd, I'd go to the insert tab at the top in the ribbon and I'd click on the table button. Now if that's the first step that I'm going to do then that's the first print screen that I'll need. So I'm going to open up my snipping tool and I'm simply going to draw around part of the Microsoft Word um, interface like that just so that you can see the insert tab uh, in the ribbon now I've got my snippet I might use some of the snipping tool tools such as the pen tool to possibly draw a, a circle around this insert tab now what I can do with this pen tool because at the minute it's a very thin brush is I can actually change the thickness of it and again, I did that by clicking on the drop down arrow and just changing the customized pen here. So now I should have a much thicker brush, although it's currently in blue. So I'm going to rub that out. And in the customize, I'm going to change the color to red because blue doesn't work very well on this. So I'm then going to just draw a circle around this insert tab because the instruction that I'm actually going to write in the instructional text over here is to click on the insert tab. 
I then need to get this print screen into the Word document. So to do that, I click on the copy button and then I go into the Word document. I'm just going to delete this text that I've written and then I'm going to go to the paste button and click on that and that will paste the picture into the Word document. Now, when you create your instructional guides, you might want to decide to write the text or the instructional text above the picture like this. So click on the insert tab Oops, at the top. And you could do that. So you could have your title, your step, your instructional text followed by your picture. However, when I do my step-by-step -step guides, what I like to do is I like to have the text on the left, the instructional text on the left, and then the picture on the right. And the reason for that is I've got a lot of white space here that I'm not using if I just do this same pattern all the way down. So step two, text, picture. Step three, step, picture. Um, and again, I've got all this blank space on, on, on the page on the right-hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that I can move this picture over here to the right. And to do that, I need to click on the picture, go to the Format tab at the top, and then look for this little icon with a little dog on it. It's called the Text Wrapping Tool. So if I click on that, and I go down to the Square option, I click on that, that'll then, that will then allow me to freely move this picture wherever I like. So now I can move this freely. I'm going to just move it all the way over to the right here so that the text is on the left and I can move this up a little bit like that which means ma I'm making much better use of the space that's available to me on this page and then I can start step two down here something else I like to do in my step-by-step -step guides is to highlight the keywords in the instructional text so I'm just going to highlight this word click because that's an instruction and I'm just going to turn it bold in style and then because the insert tab is the one that I want you to be able to click on insert I would also deem to be uh, an, an important word so I'm going to make that bold as well and then once I've done that I simply need to click on the end of this line of text keep press and return until my flashing cursor is below this picture and then I'm going to write step 2 obviously I need to format this so that it's the same as the uh, formatting above so I need to make it font size 16 and bold and I'm going to press enter take off the bold and change the font down to 14 because that's uh, the size of this text here and then I'm ready to write my step 2 instructions but first of all I'm going to go and get the next print screen that I require the next step that I need to do in this step by step guide is to once I've selected the insert tab on the ribbon is I need to click on this table icon which then uh, opens up the sub options of how many rows and how many columns I want to insert in my table. Now, the thing with this is that I'm going to have a problem here because in order for this um, option here to work, my cursor needs to be active over this window. And what I mean by that is if I then want to go and use the snipping tool, press new, you can see that I can no longer interact with this table option because I'm actually interacting with the snipping tool. So I, I can't use the snipping tool to grab a picture of my screen if I want to be active with part of that screen, like this. So for, for this step, I'm actually going to have to use the print screen button on my keyboard. If you can't remember where that is, look carefully for a key that might say PRTSCR on it for print screen. It might actually say the full words print screen. Uh, if you're using a laptop it might be somewhere different so you're going to have to look very carefully where that button is um, on a standard Lenovo IBM keyboard the print screen button is this button here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this table option select how many rows and columns it is that I actually want and then I'm going to press the print screen button so again table get the rows and columns I want and then press the print screen button Once I've done that, I can go back into my document here and I can press on the paste button and it'll paste the full print screen in that I've just done. The thing with this print screen is that I don't actually want all of this print screen. So for example, I don't want the uh, reader to see this bit down the left here and I don't really want them to see this bottom section down here. 
So what I can do is I can use the formatting button up here and I can try and find uh, this crop button. Now if you can't find it, maybe your screen doesn't look quite like this. It might look like that. So this is the crop button. The crop button, if I select that, so if I select my picture and then I select the crop button, you'll notice that I get these black, line, uh, black lines around my picture. What I can do is if I move my cursor over these lines, like that, if I click and drag away from uh, the picture um, and inwards, you can see that whatever it is that I've cut away here will disappear, like that. And I can do the same from here. So if I want to get rid of this bottom section, I can click on the black line, drag inwards of the picture, and simply cut away the parts that I don't want. Again, I might even want to zoom in even more and just focus on this area. If I then want to resize this part of the picture, I click off of the crop button, my circles come back around the edge of the picture, and that means that I can resize it like that. Obviously, you need to make sure that your pictures are clear so that the user can actually see what it is that you're doing. Now I've got my, uh, the picture the size I want it, I'm going to click on it. Again, go up to the formatting tab, find the text wrapping uh, tool, click on that and choose square. And then go to move it to where I want on my screen, which is around about here. And then I can write my instructional text. So I'm going to right click on the table icon and select number columns and rows you want in the table like that and again I'm going to uh, select the the keywords so click is an instruction and make that bold the table icon and then what I might also do is select uh, columns and rows as well and I think that's uh, enough instructional text and a very clear picture for step two of how to insert a table in Microsoft Word. Obviously what I would do then is I'd carry on with this step-by-step uh, -step guide and create step two, uh, sorry, step three, step four, etc. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stop this video here because I think you get the general idea of how to create this step-by-step -step guide. If we just recap what we've done, we've got a nice clear title at the top that stands out telling us what this document is all about. We've got very clear steps which are illustrated through the use of these screenshots. We've highlighted the keywords. We could do other little things to make the steps stand out so we could change the color of the steps possibly to make them stand out even more like this. Uh, and you just want, you want some nice structure to your step-by-step -step guide that the user can easily follow. Again, it might have to go onto two pages if necessary and if so, that's fine. I would always advise that you don't have just one step going on to another page so if that happens maybe you can add some more steps or you can um, balance the steps out from from each page um, and that's it so that's how you create a step-by-step -step guide using Microsoft Word